talking about the evolution, development of rugby referees with Claire Daniels, who's the uh, South West um, Match Official Development Officer for the Rugby Football Union. So just talk me in, in simple terms, the process, how you develop referees, the you know the, the the practical side of it. What what you work on? How do you do it? Do you record them with videos? Do you sit down with them and and give them feedback that way? How do, how does it work? It depends at, at sort of what level, but mm-hmm. certainly at the local level, at grassroots level. Well, at any level, to be honest, Jeff, it's about coaching and mentoring. So gone are the days of an assessor. Um, mm. We. <laughs> athlete development in general it's about coaching and mentoring and helping that person or that individual um overcome you know identify their own development needs and how they need to get better and and then um supporting them in finding the answers now that sounds a little bit flowery and a little bit coachy but it it essentially is that so it can be different things to, to different people now if you're going out watching new referees or supporting new referees, the last thing you probably want to do is stick a video on the sideline um, and tell them they're going to be recorded, make them even more nervous. So, But video analysis now, certainly in society development for referees, is a huge tool and it's a really worthwhile tool. So a lot of the games here in Bristol, the clubs are filming the matches. Mm-hmm. They've got a great partnership with the society. They send the matches in and they've got an analysis... An al- an analyst, easy to <laughs> rolls off the tongue, um, and he uploads that, and they will have separate meetings where they will review games, because once you you know there's nothing like actually sitting mm. down and reviewing a game, yeah. um, and analysing that way. So yeah, video review is a, is a huge mm. way, but certainly coaching and mentoring is it's the way forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm really intrigued by the, the mentoring process. Billy and Josh told me about it. I learned about it when I spoke at the um, the Bristol Society dinner l- last year. Um, it's a great concept, but it, it's really important that the right people are the mentors because if they're passing on bad habits or looking for the wrong things, it's not going to be a positive effect, is it? You Refereeing is run by volunteers, so um, and 99% of the people are well-meaning, but you're absolutely right. Coaches and mentors, it's about having the mindset that you're there to serve that person you're working with. And once you have... You need to understand that if they can build trust and rapport with that individual, then that coach-mentor relationship will develop Mm. and enable that young referee, or that referee of any age is is irrespective of age, then that relationship will develop. Um, But you're right, I mean, most referees, most athletes or sportsmen or women of any any description will have little foibles, things that they like and things that they don't like. Um, But it's about, you know, filtering out those bits yeah. of information and um, keeping hold of the really pertinent stuff. Yeah. I mean, youth is the future, and you say about, you know, you really look to get youngsters involved. Do you get many people, male or female, come to you maybe a bit older in life than you would have expected and take up the game and, and want to be referees, not when they're a teenager, but maybe late 20s, 30s? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I yeah, mean, yeah. Um, I was at the Referee Society meeting the other week, and there were two or three new members who were all probably, I would say, similar age to me. So, um, you know... Um, brilliant, brilliant. I was going to say 25, but no one's going to believe that. <laughs> but yeah, no, you know, in your 30s, 40s, it makes no difference. And, you know, a classic example is a, a lady that's just joined Bristol Society recently, never played before. Um, so I'd say she's a similar age to me. And um, season ticket holder at Bristol Rugby. Right, right. Saw female match officials and thought, why can't I brilliant. do that? So brilliant. We, we she did a course and we had her along at an event that I was supporting it. Dare I say it here, but Bath Rugby at, uh, on Saturday. Yeah, we broadcast the Bath. Don't worry about that. They're part women, of the scrum. <laughs> women and Girls um, event that Bath Rugby Foundation was supporting in, yeah, yeah. in support of International Women's Day. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we had four female referees who um, st- took a first step over the whitewash. And, you know, Sean was one of them. That was at the weekend? That was at the weekend. Were you Saturday. there? I was there. Did you see the remark? I saw it on Twitter. Did someone propose to someone on the final whistle? They did. And that was the game I was refereeing. So really? North Petherton were playing Bath ladies in the county cup final bath ladies won 7 13 7 at the final whistle uh yes bath ladies coach uh one of the one of the coaches proposed and she said yes <laughs> and you were there to witness it amazing um technology when do you introduce technology to the referees at what level are they officiating when they start to 
get the experience of an earpiece and communication and all of that because that's another responsibility it is and we like to introduce that quite early on you one of the tools or one of the methods we can introduce uh, new referees into refereeing is by appointing them as touch judges or assistant right. referees for a more experienced referee and quite often they will use a com set so if you know a lot of local rugby now um well you'll see teams of three officials mic'd up and it's a fantastic way for new referees to listen to how that more experienced referee is communicating and dealing with players mm. so but the, you know that comes at a price so the more sets that the you know the societies can purchase the more it can be used yeah yeah that's a bit, it's a great Great subject and fascinating talking about it. L last question in your role as you know the development officer for the Southwest. What is your number one priority right now as we sit and chat and when you go away from here? What's the, what's the big priority on your on your list? The big priority for me for for us at the moment is is getting more people um, into refereeing, enjoying a quality experience, and that they want to stay involved. And the first step they must negotiate, navigate, look for to do that is keepyourbootson.com and get on an England Rugby Referee Award course for the 15-a-side game or the Refereeing Children CPD, uh, which is a, a three-hour course. And that'll enable you to, you know, that'll build your confidence mm. in refereeing the kids down at the club or the school. Brilliant. Claire, it's been great having you on the Scrum. Big thanks for coming in and explaining what you do and good luck for the future.